The more planets we discover around other stars, the more one thing becomes clear. Our solar system is different, and the more we learn about it, the stranger it seems. Back in the 1990s, when astronomers first started finding planets outside the solar system, they assumed most of them would look similar to ours. Why wouldn't they? Our system was the only working example we had. You know the setup, four small rocky planets near the sun, then a big gap, then the gas giants, huge cold planets orbiting far out in the dark. It felt like the logical arrangement of worlds, but the discoveries that followed shattered that assumption. The first major surprise came with hot Jupiters, gas giants orbiting ridiculously close to their stars, so close that a whole year lasts only days. In our solar system, that zone is occupied by Mercury, a scorched rock, not a seething ball of gas. At first, astronomers thought hot Jupiters were rare, but then they started finding super-Earths, planets bigger than Earth but smaller than Neptune often in tight, fast orbits near their stars. Rocky, gas-rich, or something in between, they were everywhere. Soon, a pattern started to take shape. Most planetary systems out there are compact, crowded, and chaotic. Astronomers called them peas in a pod systems. Multiple planets, similar in size and mass, orbiting in tight formations. In some cases, an entire planetary lineup fitted within 0.4 astronomical units of its star. That's closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. By comparison, it's like cramming an entire solar system into the space where only one scorched world exists in ours. And then there's us. The inner solar system is spacious by comparison. Mercury and Mars are separated by over 100 million miles a stretch that feels empty by exoplanet standards. Then comes the asteroid belt, a no-man's land of shattered rock and frozen debris. Only after that does Jupiter appear, followed by Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, each more distant than the last, stretching into the frozen dark. Our planets are well-spaced, their orbits nearly circular, with small inner worlds and large outer giants. No crowding, no chaos, just silence, order and space. Compared to the tightly packed systems we've seen elsewhere, ours is oddly serene. One leading theory, called the Grand Tack, suggests that in the early days of the solar system, Jupiter didn't form where it sits now. It likely took shape further out, then migrated inwards, ploughing through the young disk of gas and debris scattering and absorbing material that might have built super-Earths. But then Saturn got involved, its gravity pulled Jupiter back outwards. What it left behind was a quieter, emptier inner zone, just enough material for four small rocky planets to form, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. This may explain why our solar system is missing what most others have, large planets close to their star. But Jupiter didn't just shape the inner solar system, it had a huge impact on the outer solar system too. Its powerful gravity stirred up the space between Mars and itself so much that a planet never formed there, leaving behind the scattered debris of the asteroid belt. It deflected and absorbed countless comets and asteroids, shielding Earth from catastrophic impacts. And among the outer giants it helped maintain a delicate gravitational harmony in many planetary systems, these giants don't play so nicely. Gravitational battles between them often lead to chaos. Worlds slingshotted into extreme, elongated orbits, or ejected into interstellar space entirely. But here, the giants stayed well-spaced and nearly circular. No planet-crossing paths, no wild eccentricities. And that long-term stability so rare among exoplanetary systems suggests that if anything was flung out, it didn't leave behind the scars we so often see elsewhere. There's another detail that sets us apart, orbital alignment. In most systems with multiple planets, the orbits lie roughly in the same plane, but the alignment can vary wildly. Some planets tilt steeply compared to the star's equator, some even orbit backwards in retrograde. 
These are signs of violent pasts, gravitational tugs of war that twist orbits and wreck alignment. But in our solar system, the planets orbit within a narrow band, just six degrees of each other. That puts us among the most coplanar systems known, not unique, but uncommon. And what about our Sun? Compared to other Sun-like stars, it's unusually well behaved. Many stars, especially younger or more active ones, flare violently, stripping atmosphere and sterilizing nearby worlds. But our Sun, while not silence, has been steady enough for billions of years to allow life not just to form, but to evolve. That quiet consistency alongside circular orbits, gentle inclinations and orderly planetary spacing paints a picture of a system shaped not by chaos, but by calm. So what does it all mean? Let's look at the numbers, not just the statistics, but as context. Across the galaxy, the majority of sun-like stars, roughly 70%, host something our solar system doesn't. A super-Earth, a mini-Neptune, a big world hugging its star in a tight, fast orbit. But here, nothing, not one. Cold Jupiters, gas giant like ours, orbiting far from their stars, are much rarer. They show up in only 10 to 15% of systems. But here's where it gets even stranger. How many systems have both? A cold Jupiter and small rocky planets tucked in close to their star? Just a handful. Current estimates suggest maybe 5 to 7% and that's the category we fall into. We're not entirely unique, but we are statistically rare. An odd case amongst thousands. But maybe the strangest thing of all is that out of every planetary system we found, we know of only one where the planets move in calm, stable orbits around a steady star at just the right distances for life to emerge and wonder, why is our solar system so weird?